New term, new pupils, new beginnings. What are the essential ingredients for a smooth start to the new year? From setting up your classroom to setting the ground rules for behaviour, teachers from Combergrove Primary School in South London talk us through their preparations. I'm really looking forward to doing some things differently, arranging the classroom in a different way as well. I want to change things around so it's easier to access different parts of the classroom and also I think it's nice, it's more refreshing. Getting my class list sorted and making sure the spelling of each child's name is correct and then I start um, getting my teaching assistant to help make labels for trays, for pegs, for pencil cases, um, also doing a stock list to um, the lady who organises our stock, what books we'll need for each subject. We treat the school a bit like the fourth bridge really, something is always new, like there's a new display going up in the hall there, but there may be something that's been up three years. So that when the children do come into the classrooms, they're not bare and ugly, there's, there's something in there already for them to see. We like to start off the year with their portraits, so we normally do that within the first sort of week or two. Then they can go up on, on the wall and they stay there all year, and then we use them for our end of year six show. We set up our first display with the photographs um, that we've taken on home visits along with their... Um, drawings that they've made and we put them up and we have a little speech bubble next to it so that when they come in we can say well, what do you want to say about this so we get to have the, you know get to hear the child's voice straight away. We do like to keep up the work from the year before as a, a standard really of what we, we hope the, the children will achieve and it's something for them to look to and to aspire to in terms of you know writing levels of presentation speak with a previous teacher and also receive the levels so we're in numeracy and literacy and then we can actually use that information to put them into loose groups but uh, in year two they do tend to make jumps and they do progress at different times so they're really loose groups and they're quite easy and quite flexible to move them. Not just the previous year levels but year on year just seeing if there are any patterns um, talking to the teacher is absolutely vital. There'll be the different dynamics going on. So talking to the class teacher about um, the emotional, educational and behavioural needs of those children. So therefore, you know, with groupings, who goes with who and which children you need to keep a particular eye on. I don't necessarily want to know every last little detail because I think it's a really good start to have a fresh start in September. And perhaps what another teacher may have found challenging someone else or myself may not, or vice versa. The last few days of the holidays, I'm always in my classroom, sort of sorting out, just making sure that the book corner has the right books in the right levels, because I try and make sure that there's a, a graduated sort of reading scheme in my classroom, making sure that my desk is sorted and that I've got all the things that I need. Because obviously, you know, you're tired at the end of term, so that week in the, in the holidays is actually really good. You're, you're more refreshed to come back in and just really make sure that everything is organised. I come in as well just the last couple of days of the holidays and I just spend time um, cleaning the classroom, making sure all the resources are in the right trays, because the children spend a lot of time self-initiating their own activities. You often find bits of mobile in your number cards and things like that. I think a list of things that you want to do and things perhaps that you'd like to change is really useful um, because there is so much. Just to have that very practical tool of being able to tick things off your list and know that they're done or been passed on to a TA is useful. Anything that's not finished on that list when your class arrives, it's unlikely that it'll get done <laughs> because you're really like you're on a ball that is rolling and there's so much going on once the children arrive set your stall out in terms of behaviour and expectation straight away um, from that first moment that they're in and you know it's, it's, it's fun to do it in a fun way if you can. I talk about the rules, what sort of rules they would like to have in the class because then they feel that they've got an ownership of the class rules and so then we put the rules up, up that we've decided on as a class on that first week.
It doesn't matter if you're with the older ones or the younger ones, the boundaries and rules are really important. And from day one, we do, you know, make sure the rules are followed and explain it to them in a way, in a very practical way. Like, you know, we practice walking around the classroom sensibly. We practice using our quiet voices inside just so that they are aware of the rules and the routines that are in place. The first week back is the week probably I enjoy a great deal because uh, nothing much happens. Every child is busy in their classrooms, the teachers are buried under all the things they're doing. Um, my priority on the first morning <coughs> is to see the children who've forgotten which class they're supposed to be in. One thing I like to do at the start of the year is to have a little letter that I send home to the parents outlining which days are PE days, when they'll need the PE kit, when they have reading or spelling, little things that the parents can do with their children to help them. I know the parents get anxious when the children move to a new class as well, slightly different routine, so it helps um, to settle them in. Just feeling organised, that you've got everything in place, that you have prepared things, and also maybe having extra stuff, maybe like a nice story, things like that that you can slot in because you don't know exactly your, your children totally until they start. At the beginning of term you have so many really good ideas that you want to put into your classroom and put into practice, and you can end up with a really long list. So it's just important to um, be organised, but also prioritise what you need to do and not get too overwhelmed. The list of jobs is never done, mm. and I think if you accept that, <laughs> then you can feel like you're making progress. Mm.